Hey, how you doing? <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Welcome to another time here, another time in the hopper room, and another time to pray. Thanks for making it. Thanks for coming for this. Uh, thanks, thanks for 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 making a time here. Uh, we we get to meditate into the book of Daniel. We've been doing a study of the book of Daniel since uh, last year. Uh, the year before, actually, this is our second year going through the book of Daniel, and we're presently in Daniel chapter 6, verse 25 to 27. Uh, we started looking at this two days ago. We've taken two bites at this verses of scripture. We'll try to close this today and hopefully close uh, chapter 6 with uh, the last verse, verse 28 of chapter 6 tomorrow. But you know, as we look through those three verses, uh, first, that we did a general introduction of Darius being able to give this testimony about the God of Daniel. And yesterday, we looked at the first part of that, this verse is talking about the need to not just love God, but to also fear God. All right? The worship of Jehovah is not just the fear of Jehovah. That's what religious people want to make us to ride with the all the different things that is not complete that's not jehovah that's not the gospel right it's not just the fear of god there's also the love of god now the charismatic people have also gone to that other extreme where they only talk about the love of god then we'll begin to use god right it's not just the love of god it's the love and the fear of god it's not the all is the end Right, the power, the genius of the hand is just a love and the fear of God. That is the Jehovah. Anything less is not Jehovah God. You're worshiping an idol. You're worshiping yourself. You're worshiping a God of your own creation. The worship of Jehovah involves the love and the fear of Jehovah. Right, those two are important. Is the what you might call the yin and the yang right that makes it complete in our worship of jehovah it is that god is love right we'll see that beating and overly and emphasized right by uh john the beloved right we're saying john chapter 4 verse 8 verse 16 god is love right that's okay but that's not the fullness of the gospel you don't just run with that that is good right but you also have to know that that same god that is love is a terrible god right he's not a nice god he's a good god it's not a nice god he's a good god right it's this he is to be feared right he is to be feared even though he's a god of love right son if you don't fear him you will die before your time right second corinthians chapter 5 verse 11 paul says that fear of god drives us the love of god constrains us he says again also i believe that would be verse 15 or thereabout but in verse 11 talks about the fear of god right the fear of god constrains us the love of god constrains us it's the love and the fear of god that determines and that helps us curtail our life that helps us focus discipline our life in the service of Jehovah, in the in the worship of Jehovah, in the fellowship with Jehovah, right? It's not just one or the other. And that's what we tried to um, emphasize yesterday, right? In trying to close it, you know, we, we see all the things that uh, Darius brings out concerning Jehovah God. And it begins to talk about the fact that God is living, he's a living God. Right, it's a God that is living. It's not a dead God, right? It's not a dead God that religion worships. It's a God that is living. It's not a God that is far away. It's a God that is near. It's a God that wants to work with us on a daily basis, on a hourly basis, on a second basis, on a minute basis, right? The, 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 we have come to Jehovah not to use him. No, he uses us. He's a partnership. He's a fellowship, right? When God created us, he created us for fellowship, for fellowship. Not that he would use us. No, we use him. He created us for fellowship, a oneness in the relationship. Let's pray. Ah, amen, amen. 
Thanks for praying. You know, as we just shared earlier on, we just looking at Daniel 6, verse 25 to 27, and we spoke the importance of the fact that God is a living God. It's not a religious God. It's not a dead God. It's not a God that is far. It's a God that wants to relate with us. It's not a dead party God. It's a one-on-one -on -one God. You know, some religions pray in ten parties uh, and expect God to be listening to them. Oh, that's the kind of God they serve. That's not the Christian God. That is not a Jewish God. That's not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible is not the person we talk to in third party. He doesn't listen in to us. We talk to him directly. He listens directly to us. He's a one-on-one -on -one God. He also he has come not just to be with us in Emmanuel. He has come to be in us. He has come to be in us. What can be more intimate than that? That he has come to be in us, not just with us, but in us, right? That is a God we serve. That is the way he wants to relate with us, right? If we want to be Christians, if we want to be uh, people that serve the God of the Bible, I don't know about any other God, but the God of the Bible, then we have to be willing to live in, in a one-on-one -on -one fellowship with him. Otherwise, stop going to church. You're wasting your time. Right, you're not gonna be able to walk with God unless you're ready to walk with Him as a one-on-one -on -one God, a God that is near. He wants to be one God that is near. He wants to work miracles in and through our lives. He wants to make Himself visible. He's not a God that is a part-time God. He's not a background God. He's a God that wants to make Himself visible in and through our lives. That is God. That is the God we serve. That's the God of Daniel, right? If you want a God of Daniel to be in your life. is a God that wants to be visible. He wants to be living. He wants to be, um, he wants to overshadow our life. He wants people that see us be like Darius saw Daniel. They saw the hand of God. They, was, they should see the hand of God in our lives. That is the reason why we're here. We're not here as secret service people, right? Because we're here to be the witness of the person, the power and presence of Christ to be the witness of the person, the power, right? And <laughs> of, of the person, the power and presence of Christ, right? So we cannot do a part-time Christianity. We cannot do a secret Christianity, right? It is that God is visible in our lives. And the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please him, right? Because they that come to me, to him must believe that he is, 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 and he's a rewarder. He is, he is, he is, he is, and he's a rewarder. He is, he is, he is, and he's a rewarder, right? There's nothing passive about that, right? And Darius goes ahead and he says that, his kingdom is the one that shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers. He delivers. He delivers. He delivers and rescues. He delivers and rescue. He delivers and rescues. He's a God that is active. His power is active in our lives, right? He delivers and he rescues. And his work, and he works with signs and wonders in heaven and on earth, right? If we serve Jehovah, then Jehovah must be seen in our life. Right, it must be seen in the way we talk, it must be seen in the way we hear, it must be seen in the way we relate to one another, it must be seen in the way we care, it must be seen in the way we carry ourselves. Right, you cannot be worshiping Jehovah, and none of that will, 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 will be absent in your life. The Bible says Daniel differentiated himself. That was the reason why Darius was able to say all this concerning his goal. He differentiated himself, right? He differentiated himself. So if we're serving God, we have to differentiate ourselves by the way we live our life, by the way we carry ourselves. Our goal must be visible in us, right? He, del he delivers and rescues and his works, and he works signs and wonders in heaven, but not just in heaven on earth, not just in heaven, but on earth, right? Throw away all of those religious things and says that the blessings of God are just in heaven. That's stupid. That's not the Bible, God of the Bible. The God of the Bible works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. In the invisible realm and in the visible realm, his hands can be seen. 
it might be invisible, but his words are not invisible, right? He is the one who has delivered Daniel from the power of lions. He's the one that delivers you and me, right? He wants to deliver. He wants to give us the best February ever. He wants to give us the best 2023 ever. The question is, will we allow him? That's up to us. God bless you. Thanks for joining me praying this uh, today. Uh, have a great remaining of the afternoon. See you tomorrow, God willing. God bless you. Bye-bye.